Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Monday, the 29th of August. Post Noida Twin Towers demolition in India, focus shifts to clearing 80,000 ton debris. Pakistan's foreign minister calls for relief amid devastating floods. Death toll crosses 1,060. And Sri Lanka's President Vikramasinghe to cut spending in interim budget. And now for all the details. A day after two illegally constructed skyscrapers were demolished in India's Noida city, people residing near the site said on Monday that they were facing issues due to the dust surrounding the area. After the successful demolition, the focus has now shifted to clear the 80,000 tons of debris from the area, which is expected to take about two to three months. A day after Indian authorities demolished two illegally constructed skyscrapers in a control explosion in Noida city, near capital New Delhi, people residing near the site said they were facing issues due to the dust surrounding the area. Cleaning operations were underway in the area on Monday as the focus has now shifted to clearing an estimated 80,000 metric tons of rubble of the 338 feet tall twin towers which housed 850 unoccupied apartments. The clearance operations are expected to take about two to three months. Officials had said on Sunday the air quality had remained unchanged in the area after the demolition. However, the dust rising from the debris entered the houses of the residents. The fear was that it will not affect our society from vibrations, but it didn't happen. And it went smoothly. It went down in 9 seconds. We saw it live in the whole world. और स्मोक का प्रॉब्लम था जो हमारे घरों में अभी भी घुस गया है डस्ट का अब साफ कराएंगे आज इंडिया सुप्रीम कोर्ट लास्ट ईयर ऑर्डर द डिमोलिशन ऑफ द टावर्स इन नोएडा आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग लीगल बैटल फाउंड दे वायलेटेड मल्टीपल बिल्डिंग रेगुलेशंस एंड फायर सेफ्टी नॉर्म्स द मैसेज जो गया है वो ये है कि बिल्डर लोग अब मनमानी नहीं करें अब जो है ना 10 साल का जो बनने में स्ट्रक्चर लगा उसको दस सेकंड भी नहीं लगे गिरने में ये इतना गवर्नमेंट अगर सोच ले कि भाई अब ये करना है काम जुडिशरी का भी बहुत बड़ा हाथ था उन्होंने भी परमिट किया सच डिमोलिशन आर रेयर इन इंडिया डिस्पाइट रैम्पेंट इलीगल कंस्ट्रक्शन पुलिस सेट दे वर एसेसिंग वेदर एनी डैमेज हर आकर्ड आफ्टर द पुलिंग डाउन ऑफ द टॉलर स्ट्रक्चर्स एवर पुल डाउन इन द कंट्री and in news from Pakistan, the death toll due to devastating floods in Pakistan crossed 1,060 on Monday, with ministers calling the international community for help with relief efforts as the government struggles to cope amid an economic crisis. The calamity has affected around 33 million people across the country, washing away villages and crops while authorities race against time to provide relief. Devastating floods due to unusually heavy monsoon rains have affected around 33 million people across Pakistan, while the death toll crossed 1,060 on Monday as the government has declared a national emergency, terming the situation a serious climate catastrophe. The deluge has washed away villages and crops as soldiers and rescue workers race against time to provide relief to thousands of displaced people, especially in Sindh and Balochistan region. Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari in an interview to Reuters said he has not seen destruction of this scale, adding many crops that provided much of the population's livelihoods had been wiped out. He said the country urgently needs financial help from the international community to deal with the crisis. Pakistan would also launch an appeal this week asking United Nations member states to contribute to relief efforts, Bilawal said. Going forward, uh, I would expect not only the IMF, but, uh, the international community and international agencies uh, to truly grasp the, 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 the level of devastation. 
Meanwhile, in neighboring Afghanistan, the Taliban authorities also appealed for international aid over the weekend after the death toll from flooding hit 192 this month, with the deluge affecting more than a million people. Afghanistan has been reeling from natural disasters this year, including a drought and an earthquake that killed more than 1,000 people in June. The nation has been largely cut off from the international financial system since the Taliban took over a year ago. Well, Pakistan has rejected the Taliban's allegations about Islamabad's airspace being used for the U.S. strike that killed Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahari in July. Pakistan's foreign ministry in a statement said the remarks were highly regrettable and defied the norms of responsible diplomatic conduct. Pakistan on Sunday rejected Taliban's acting defense minister Mohammad Yaqub's allegations that Islamabad had allowed U.S. drones to use its airspace to access Afghanistan, saying his remarks were highly regrettable and defied the norms of responsible diplomatic conduct. Yaqub told a news conference in Kabul that American drones had been entering Afghanistan via Pakistan. Pakistani authorities have previously denied involvement in or advanced knowledge of a drone strike the United States said it carried out in Kabul in July that killed al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri. A spokesperson for the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency declined to comment. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari told Reuters he had made checks after the airstrike and had been told that Pakistani airspace was not used. He said he would check again after Sunday's allegations but expected the position to be the same. Pakistan's foreign ministry released a statement saying it noted Yaqub's comments with deep concern. In the absence of any evidence, as acknowledged by the Afghan minister himself, such conjectural allegations are highly regrettable and defy the norms of responsible diplomatic conduct, the statement said. The Taliban last week said it was investigating the July airstrike and that it has not found the al-Qaeda leader's body. Yaqub's comments could exacerbate tension between Afghanistan and its neighbour at a time when the Afghan Taliban is mediating talks between Pakistan and a Pakistani Taliban militant group. Afghanistan, which is undergoing an acute economic crisis, also relies heavily on trade with Pakistan. Moving on, members of a government clerk association in Pakistan administered Kashmir staged a demonstration recently to demand a 15% raise in allowances, which they said were promised to them in March this year. The protesters blamed the government of systematically denying benefits and rights to the people in the illegally occupied region. All Pakistan Clerk Association in Pakistan administered Kashmir held a protest recently to demand promised allowances which they said the Pakistan government has been denying them. The protesters said they were notified 15% increment in March, but it has not been added in their salaries till date, while their counterparts in Pakistan have got the raise. They said they held several protests for their rights since then, but the authorities have kept ignoring their demands. <laughs> और लेकिन आजाद कश्मीर में हमें मारूम रखा हुआ है इस जायज मुतालबे के हक के लिए हम जायज मुतालबात के हल के लिए हम हड़ताल पे निकले हैं अल्लाह ताला हमारे हुक्मरानों को होश के नाखून दे लोकल्स हैव लॉन्ग ब्लेम्ड दैट पाकिस्तान सिस्टमैटिकली डिनाइज बेनिफिट्स राइट्स एंड रिसोर्सेज टू द पीपल इन इट्स इलीगली ऑक्युपाइड टेरिटरीज दिस इज सक्सेसिव गवर्नमेंट्स इन पाकिस्तान एडमिनिस्टर्ड कश्मीर हैव पेड लिटिल अटेंशन टू देयर प्रेसिंग प्रॉब्लम्स ओवर द इयर्स and in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikramasinghe is set to slash expenditure when he presents an interim budget on Tuesday to see the crisis-ridden country through the rest of the year amid discussions with the International Monetary Fund on a bailout package. The tourism-dependent nation of 22 million is facing its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948, with foreign exchange reserves crashing, public finances in a mess and the cost of basic goods rocketing. Vikramasinghe, who is also the finance minister, is expected to outline measures to support low-income communities worst hit by the financial crisis and announce fresh taxes to shrink a double-digit deficit. A full-year budget for 2023 is likely to be presented in November, where a broader recovery plan will be outlined. 
An IMF team that arrived in the country last week concludes its visit on Wednesday, with Sri Lankan officials saying they expect to have a staff-level agreement in place to advance talks for an emergency loan of around 3 billion US dollars. And the 10th edition of the National Maritime Search and Rescue Exercise, SARX 2022, was held in India's southern Chennai city by the Indian Coast Guard over the weekend. The two-day exercise had 50 WIN participants from agencies like the Navy, police, by 24 observers from 16 friendly foreign countries. The Indian Coast Guard ICG conducted the 10th National Maritime Search and Rescue Exercise SARX-22 in southern Chennai city over the past weekend. The two-day exercise that began on Saturday had 51 participants from agencies like the ICJ, the Navy and the State Police and by 24 observers from 16 friendly foreign countries including Australia, Maldives, Thailand, Indonesia and China. As part of the exercise, Indian Coast Guard's Dornier planes demonstrated ways of rescuing passengers from ships and aircraft during emergencies. For simulation, a passenger vessel with 500 people and an aircraft with 200 people was used. Notable aspects of the exercise included the use of a remote-controlled live boy, Jason Cradle and Scramble Net. This time the different thing is that we are simulating two situations simultaneously. One is a passenger ship which has you know, had a fire on board and people are, have to be evacuated or they are jumping into the water. And second scenario we have simulated is an aircraft which has ditched. The typicality of this scenario is this time we are incorporating something like or evaluating our capabilities for mass rescue operation where the number of lives that you are wanted, you know, required to save is large, which cannot be done by a single agency. The theme of this edition of the biennial exercise was capacity building towards marine passenger safety. The exercise validated the practices and training to conduct mass rescue operations in the 4.6 million square kilometer of the sea that falls under the Coast Guard's jurisdiction. And as India's capital New Delhi prepares for winter and the accompanying season of acrid smog, the government is promoting a motorcycle helmet fitted with filters and a fan at the back that it says can remove 80% of pollutants. A motorcyclist weaves through the chaotic streets of India's capital New Delhi, wearing a special helmet fitted with filters and a fan at the back. Shellios Techno Labs, the developers of the helmet, said it is the first of its kind in the world and added lab test by an independent laboratory show it can keep more than 80% of pollutants out of users' nostrils. State agencies have pumped thousands of dollars into Shellios Techno Labs, a startup whose founder Amit Patak began work on the helmet in a basement in 2016. That was the year of the first headlines about the filthy air that makes New Delhi nearly unbreathable from mid-December to February. As the heavy coal traps dust, vehicle emissions and smoke from burning crop waste in nearby states. This is actually anti-air pollution. And when you go to pollution, you don't know that you are in pollution. And you feel like you are breathing as you feel like you are breathing. And you feel comfortable. And you don't know that you are in pollution. You don't know that you are in the outdoor. In 2019, Patak began sales of the helmet, which was fitted with a replaceable filter membrane and a fan powered by a rechargeable battery that can run for six hours. India's Science and Technology Ministry hailed the helmet as offering a breath of fresh air to bikers, eager for any solution in a country that was home to 35 of the world's 50 worst polluted cities last year. Patak, an electrical engineer, sees a huge market estimates and annual demand for 30 million helmets. Uh, it's a huge market. You know, in India, uh, on the roads, you've got uh, more than uh, 20 crore uh, two-wheelers and every year approximately 10% get added. So it's an immense market. And uh, so to get the product right, to be able to service uh, a, a portion of that market uh, is, is the immediate objective for us. Shalios declined to reveal production or sales figures, but the helmet retails for 4,500 rupees on the company's website. Since the weight of 1.5 kg is heavier than existing helmets, Shalios said 
they have tied up with a big manufacturer to develop a lighter version from a thermoplastic material rather than fiberglass, a step that may also cut the cost of production. The new version is expected to hit the streets within a few months, possibly in time for winter in India and an accompanying season of acrid smog. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.